They call it the straw boss in a band like that. A lot of times it's the first alto player. And I think Benny just naturally fell into that position of sort of being the straw boss of the band. So, you know, he might have been involved with kicking off tempos. And so, in other words, he would be like the subordinate to Bob Wills as far as, you know, rehearsals and all that kind of stuff. We used to broadcast every day at noon, at noon every day, five days a week from Tulsa. Because we'd come back in every night, you know, and get up for that noon broadcast every day at noon. be a little bit of everything. I remember one time they had a big strike. ASCAP wouldn't let any of their tunes be played on the air, so we had to play BMI tunes and all that stuff. So we were playing a lot of jazz tunes, like Jasmine Blues. We played it, and they'd call it the Tulsa Stomp. <laughs> <laughs> when they rehearsed, it's very possible that Benny was the guy who ran the rehearsals with input from Wills and he was always trying to encourage the musicians. We need to play together, and then Danny said he would say that thing about, we need to have a meeting of the minds for a meeting of the music, you know. Th that shows a lot about the kind of experience that he had working in larger groups. See, the, the schedule there in Tulsa was, every Thursday and Saturday, we stayed in Tulsa and played at Kane's Academy, Thursday and Saturday night. Every Tuesday night, we drove down to Oklahoma City, it was about 130 miles away. Well, it was never too far that we didn't get back in by 5, the latest, or 5.30 maybe. And every day, no matter when we got back in, and but we had to be down to Keynes Academy at 12 noon, half-hour broadcast, statewide, sponsored by his own Playboy Flower. But that broadcast was a part of the deal because we always told him where it was going to be that night, you know. Everyone tuned in, you know. So we was on that bus a lot. One of the things that Danny emphasized about Benny was the fact that he was always there to play. He brought 110% onto the bandstand every night. He never slacked off. And you know, those guys worked very hard. And there were times when, you know, obviously they didn't feel their best. And Benny would get up and do the job. You know, he figured that was what was required of him. As I say, when we play some of the smaller towns where there's more country people, you know, I'll be getting more fiddles in too. He drew crowds that were just unbelievable. We'd go into a town of 3,000 people and they have 2,000 people at the dance. They'd come from miles around. It just, I couldn't believe these crowds. But the deal was, every Thursday and Saturday at Canes, every Tuesday in Oklahoma City, Monday nights we alternated. One Monday we'd play in, in McAllister or Pahuska or some of these smaller towns. We'd catch them about once every two months, but Monday would be at just a different little town somewhere around. Wednesdays was the same thing. We would fill it up with something. And every Friday, we alternated just between two towns. We'd go down to Fort Smith, Arkansas on one Friday, and the next Friday we'd go to Seminole, which were very good dance towns. They could stand it every two weeks. And Sunday's off. 